You know, what a moment of joy to be here at this institution on this special occasion uh, where Swati, you know, who has been one of uh, my favorite students in our class, I think two years ago, presents with great pride one of her brightest students and that is also such an inspirational moment, I think, for all these students sitting here. I think all of you can be where Jay is today and, uh, you know, if he can be an innovator, so can be each one of you. And that's why I'm addressing you as innovators. And uh, uh, in my presentation, uh, I want to share with you some thoughts on, uh, on uh, managing innovation, the process of innovation, and how do we handle people like Jay, innovators who may be part of our organization, uh, visionary, but I think his wife may agree, not very easy to deal with. <laughs> but I think all organizations, like all great families, need people like him. So I would proceed with that. Uh, I just want to say, you know, a word about uh, IIT, not really, you know, especially for Jay, but the institution, fine institution that he belongs to. Uh, when, uh, you know, he was being introduced as belonging to IIT, I was just thinking about where IIT stands, an institution like IIT stands in India's great scheme of uh, academic institutions. Uh, I would just digress to share with you a personal experience of my husband who at that time was a professor at IIM Ahmedabad. You know, at some point, I think about seven, six, seven years ago, he was being introduced to Bill Gates in Doha. The person who was introducing my husband introduced him as saying, you know, he's a professor at IIM Ahmedabad. And with IIM, I think Bill Gates wore a blank look. He could not understand. So the individual who was introducing him, he said, actually, IIMs are IITs of management. And that made sense to Bill Gates. And he said, IIT of management, then I mean, I can understand where it belongs. So that is where, you know, some of our finest innovators come from. And one is, in fact, very proud to be associated with such institutions. Uh, innovations, uh, like the kind that uh, Jay talked about. You know, in India, there are so many innovations all around, happening all around. Uh, I don't really have to give you, you know, examples. They are taking place all around you. And you know, with the, uh, with the new technology coming in, we see so many new apps being applied and they being indigenized, you know, being made more relevant to our context and so on. Uh, just, you know, one example to tell you where, you know, to kind of uh, focus your attention on the kind of things that I'm going to talk about. Uh, you know, SMS service. What is an innovation? Innovation is a new idea, developing a new idea, adapting a new idea, making the idea relevant, and if possible, making money out of that idea. But relevance has to be important as speaker after speaker have been saying. Now, SMS service, short management, you know, those uh, short text service, it was started to promote interpersonal communication. Interpersonal is not possible, so we use mobile to ensure that we don't have face-to-face, -face, but short text service so that people can interact with each other. How it was adapted brilliantly by the Indian banking service in a developing country where we cannot actually have very expensive systems to ensure the safety of bank funds. Uh, all of us, when we use a bank card, you know, a credit card to make purchases, immediately we get an SMS to say that actually your card has been used. You know, what an inexpensive, quick, dependable method for each user to know that actually his, from his or her funds, some money has been withdrawn. So when we are talking about innovation, we are talking about such simple ideas, but ideas which make a lot of sense in our context. In fact, uh, people like uh, C.K. Prahlad and uh, Professor Marshalkar, they have written a paper in Harvard Business Review, I think about three, four years back. Uh, I mean, that was exactly the year when uh, Professor C.K. Prahlad passed away, I think about five years back. Uh, they call these kinds of innovations Gandhian innovations. And Gandhian innovations are innovations which by nature are inclusive. They benefit a large number of people. They can be scaled up easily. And they're also inexpensive. And they have some kind of a vision. Uh, uh, when I talk about innovations, the uh, topic is enhancing innovations in organizations. I want to emphasize in this the role that each one of the members of the organization can play 
in increasing the possibility of innovations taking place in organizations. Uh, I would like to call it, you know, borrowing, borrowing from the famous uh, academic in Harvard, Dr. Rosa Beth Cantor, innovations is like letting a thousand flowers bloom. And thousand flowers at any ground cannot bloom unless, you know, the ground has been prepared, a great deal of homework has been done, the right ecosystem is in place, and then only we make sure that some random flowers, some random seeds which are thrown here and there, they indeed take root. Out of those same random seeds, you know, there are some plants which indeed grow, and out of those plants, indeed, there are some which flower. And it is collective responsibility of most people in organizations who would like to uh, be, in fact, assurers of innovation in the organization to ensure that those probabilities are increased, and each one of us can play a role in that. Uh, to begin with, our understanding of innovation, this is very simple that, uh, you know, it has to be an idea which is uh, very common sense. Often it is a focused idea, uh, it is specific, it has very clear applications, and uh, most of the innovations start in a very minor way. You know, people who are just putting that idea together may not even realize the power of those innovations. They are, need not be grandiose. But often innovations are in response to some problems that we face. Not always, but often. And those are the innovations which have the greatest punch, greatest puck, and you know, greatest power to take us to the next level. Uh, when I was received at the airport today, I don't know if Mohit is around here. Uh, I think that's okay. So, Moit and I were talking about uh, 14th of January in Gujarat. Uh, I don't know if amongst you there are some uh, people from Gujarat. You know, Uttarayan is a very special festival, I mean, in most parts, I think all parts of the country, especially in Gujarat, that festival is associated with a very popular sport, kite flying. Yeah, can some of you understand that? Kite flying is a passion in Gujarat and around uh, the Uttarayan time, it assumes, you know, big proportions, almost verging on, I should not use the term, madness. You know, there are people of all ages who are very enthusiastically engaged in flying kites, you know. You will find them all over. You will find them in balconies, you will find them on terraces, you will find them out in streets and so on. Now, when there are hundreds and thousands of people flying kites, they, it poses a danger to people who are passing on the road especially two-wheelers, because those people who are riding a two-wheeler, they are exposed to that threat. Thread. Uh, about two, three years ago, when the Chinese special thread, we call it manja, it was introduced in the, especially in Gujarat market, especially in Ahmedabad, it was, uh, I think, covered with a very, you know, powder of, uh, you know, glass, and it became indeed deadly. And, in, in fact, it led to quite a few accidents, Many people were hospitalized and leading to a couple of deaths, it became so severe. And there was an NGO which looked at this as a problem. And the problem was, what can we do about this, pos this uh, probability of lots of people getting hurt because of that, you know, manja which was being used, and you cannot really contain the enthusiasm of people. Now, just thinking about this problem came up a simple solution. I don't know if some of you are aware here about a new product which is called Guard. Can you raise your hand, those of you who know about bike guard? First of all, do you understand the problem that a two-wheeler rider would face when he or she is moving on a street around Uttarayan time when there are, you know, innumerable instances of threads and people flying, you know, uh, flying the kites, not even aware and thread you cannot even see. So the danger to one's life, the danger to one's, uh, uh, you know, physical uh, fitness, uh, physical uh, well-being is great. And the person, uh, in fact, there was an NGO which got worried about it and they came up with this interesting product called Bike Guard. I just want to show you what it looks like. Uh, can you see something attached to the handle of the, of the two-wheeler? Now, this is such a simple product. It is inexpensive, it can be fitted directly and it's a piece of wire which someone has thought uh, you know, should have, should be tied to two hands and, you know, it can be put in since uh, this danger is only a very regional, a very seasonal kind of a danger, it can be put in place easily. After two, three days, it can be removed. Now, this product, indeed, because it's met all those conditions, it was simple, it it's addressed a problem, it was also an idea whose time had come, it became extremely popular in last one or two years. 
now if you are moving around in Ahmedabad around let's say 13th or 14th of uh, Jul uh, 14th of January you are sure to find so many bike riders using this and you know now you also have choices available you can have it in this oval shape you can have the size and so on and it's a product which is cheap you find it around the corner you know just 40 50 60 rupees depending upon the quality of the wire and your negotiating capability right so it is just an example of another product which can be called a Gandhian product it's an innovation which addresses a local need but it's a need which is not really confined just to a handful of people and it also has a social purpose uh, I gave this example just to highlight that the genius for this kind of innovations is immense in any organization, anywhere, and more so in our country. And the question is, what can we do in an organization, within our organizations, to promote the possibility of these kinds of new ideas taking place, or the possibility of promoting more innovations? I just want to share with you briefly how innovation as a process is a little different from the normal processes that organizations undertake by way of managing themselves and then we'll move on to what can we do to increase the probability of new ideas taking root. Uh, innovations. The trouble with innovations is, and that is also the genius of innovation, that they are a combination of different kinds of attributes. In fact, they consist of so many paradoxes that, you know, at the same time they are uh, they are looking at future, providing like, you know, Jay's presentation was showing a way to the future. Still, they are grounded deeply in the past. You know, we have, to, we have to think about where we are, what kind of resources we have, and how do we build upon what we have, and so on. Uh, it is developing competencies. You know, surely there has to be knowledge, there has to be, you know, subject matter awareness, and so on. And still, there has to be, we have to overcome rigidities. We don't have to become confined to, in fact, the rigidities of that technology. We have to go beyond that and flexibly try to adapt new ideas. Uh, likewise, there are standard procedures, but beyond those standard procedures, we have to go and we have to learn to manage chaos and so on. So all those are shown here. Uh, in fact, there are many thinkers who say that managing innovations at the workplace is like managing ambidexterity. I'm sure you all know who an ambidextrous person is. An ambidextrous person is a person who can use his or her left hand with as much facility ease as he or she can use the right hand. In an innovative organization, the challenge is how can I have, you know, new way of thinking, new arrangements, new systems in place where in this, on the same, at the same time, on the other hand, there is an organizational system which is um, maintained on the basis of efficiency, what is called an operating system. So the constant challenge for organizational designers is how can we have an operating system and an innovative system working all together at the same time and working efficiently. The logic of these two systems are different. You know, in the operating system, we want predictability. In the operating system, we have, you know, standard processes, we have standard systems, standard uh, operating procedures. We love predictability. In an innovating system, just the opposite of that is true. You know, we need to encourage new ideas. New ideas are looked upon not as disturbances, but those are the future for us. You know, those are the rays of hope for the organization. So how do we, in fact, inculcate both kinds of attributes? That is the paradox and that is the challenge in managing innovations. In fact, it is mentioned that managing innovations in operating organizations is like changing your sheet while you are lying on the bed. Without a change, and that is the paradox and that is the difficulty. Okay. And I want to highlight this just to, so as to remind you about the tremendous responsibility that is associated with people who want to enhance the possibilities of innovations in organizations. Uh, as we look at, uh, you know, what does an ecosystem for innovation concerns in an organization, there are certain uh, organizational requirements, there are innovation processes which we need to understand because innovation by its definition, as I was saying, is a little different from the operating processes. Uh, innovation, uh, people in an innovative process play roles which are different from the roles that usual managers play in an operating organization. Uh, then organization culture has to be a little different and we'll pay attention to that. Examples then I want to share of some organizations which have been eminently successful in managing both the kinds of organizations, the operating as well as innovating and they are in the forefront of innovations. Uh, I'll uh, move a little quickly through them so that uh, uh, we have time to, for you to reflect on the examples that I want to share with. Uh, 
it is obvious that organizational requirements for uh, for any innovation would entail anyone who wants to think about new innovations new ways of thinking there have to be ideas in the first place those ideas have to be grounded in technical knowledge we cannot have innovations just in hawa you know as some some of the questions which were directed to jay were you know there has to be technical soundness about those there has to be a great deal of familiarity with the technology so there has to be a great deal of technical base to innovations also there has to be political intelligence who are the people who are likely to support this idea in the future are there some cliques who might work against it undermine the innovation and so on so these are in terms of information for resources of course people have to be the have to be the starting point in terms of not only uh, being idea generators but also those who support innovations and uh, then they have to be other resources like funds there has to be money available you keep on you know experimenting you keep on making mistakes keep on moving on space time has to be available then of course support is has to be available for people who are developing new ideas this support has to come in terms of endorsement this support has to come in terms of you know uh, providing professional prestige to the idea which is being developed and so on uh, a few thoughts on the process of innovation the process is uncertain there are delays by definition there are setbacks and there are failures now how do organizations deal with failures uh, i'm sure you have heard the, the name of uh, 3m as an innovating organization i'll come to 3m in a little for a little more detail in a short while but uh, i think about 7 8 years ago the ceo of uh, uh, 3m was visiting uh, india and all the business magazines had mug shot of the ceo on the front page with his famous quote that he had given to one of, in one of the interviews to the business magazines and the quote was like this in 3m we don't treat failures as failures and the ceo had gone on to explain that actually in in 3m they have this religion that there are only two kinds of experiences the success experiences and you and i would think that the opposite of success is failure and they would say the success experiences and the learning experiences so whenever there is an effort which does not meet with success we sit down we analyze what are the factors we take our learning out of it and we move on with that and just leave that idea behind and then uh, the organization moves on the team moves on the uh, the new idea which uh, takes those learnings forward it moves on uh, the process is knowledge intensive it is interactive kaleidoscopic learning kaleidoscope do you remember uh, you know all of you as children might have seen it used to be i i'm sure it is still around it is a small toy uh, i don't know if one can call it a toy uh, i don't know what is the hindi name for that but anyway uh, if i describe it to you you know it's it's a toy which you hold in hand and you know it has small pieces of bangle there are three glasses on three sides and if you move the the kaleidoscope little bit those pieces of broken bangles present uh, another very fascinating new arrangement does everyone remember playing with that kaleidoscope the beauty of the kaleidoscope is what such a simple fascinating inexpensive toy but the beauty is that every time you may move it this little bit the arrangement which presents itself is so colorful so vibrant and a unique arrangement the similarity between innovations and kaleidoscopic learning is the elements remain the same often in innovations it's a new arrangement of the ideas which are already there so ideas need not be breakthrough ideas and these thoughts i want to leave with you as future innovators you know you don't have to come up with earth shaking new ideas or inventors if you put a new idea you have picked up from heard from someone with an original idea that you yourself had maybe a new combination is that new kaleidoscopic kind of a pattern exactly the kind of thing which maybe your organization needs also when we talk about innovations uh, innovations can be in uh, terms of uh, products they can be in services they can also be in new arrangements of the processes you know you just rearrange them and out comes an innovative arrangement i want to give you the example of the well known uh, lijjat papad uh, papad we all know i'm sure being belonging to bombay you have also heard of the famous lijjat brand how it has become iconic the innovative part in that in rolling a papad you know if we just look at the manufacturing processes you prepare a dough then you make out you know small uh, balls and then you roll them and then you know you dry those and the papad is ready and then whenever you want to eat you just have to fry or you have to roast it okay now how do you use this paper humble paper product as an innovation or as an instrument of social change how do you use it to empower women and for that if you want to use a product 
preparation for which is very well known to let us say most of the lower middle class semi educated women they are extremely skilled in that but still you want to have a product where the quality is of supreme importance you want to maintain a control over the quality what do you do and these women you know we want to really empower them and you know most of these women who are rolling paper right now in Mumbai in Maharashtra in Gujarat in many so many other states of the country they roll papers in their homes but then how do we ensure that the quality of the paper is predictable the quality is of the highest kind because we don't want any compromise people who started legit with seven women of lower middle class who had gathered together on their terrace under the leadership of an innovative thinker they just decided that the process can be broken down you know you prepare dough with control on the quality of the inputs they started having you know they they developed their own formula of the mix of these ingredients but they would imp they would since we have written a case about lejat we have some idea they would import the best of the raw material you know hing from somewhere hing from iran some other material uh, you know kali mirch pepper from some other place but they would ensure that the dough is prepared centrally then it is weighed and it is given to women who are members of the lejat community then they would take the dough they will roll the papers and then they have developed parameters so that the quality of the uh, the end product can be ensured so if we also look at innovation in terms of the conversion process that itself is a major contribution uh, the process can be controversial of course when we think about innovation you know it challenges so many people it challenges you know people's past investment in resources you know there are people who have uh, who have invested their entire careers or there's investment capital investment so it's not easy to come up with new ideas for which they which may be seen as a threat by a large number of people uh, the process is crosses boundaries and it is interdisciplinary and interdepartmental you know many of the examples that previous uh, speakers have shared if you want to develop an idea which is at crossroads of technology you have to know the limits of your own knowledge then you step out you invite other people who have uh, who have expertise in related technology and together you develop that idea further that is the process of innovation uh, the process because of these challenges can be fragile political and imperialistic that's why there's need for us to pay more attention to managing it a uh, key challenges in the process uh, mobilization implementation and uh, you know ga gathering support for the idea blocking interferences because there would be so many enemies uh, maintaining momentum you know there's a there's an idea that is growing how do i ensure that people continue tend to be committed to that idea it does not die a premature death uh, team building persuading the other team members about how it is seeking inputs from other people for which there has to be a certain element of modesty there has to be certain kind of dissociation from the idea that it's okay if everyone shares the credit it does not belong only to me uh, political sensitivity uh, sharing the credit and second we redesign if we are working uh, working about a, uh, thinking about a new product and finally the delivery on promises these are some of the elements now i would like you to pay attention to these three roles which are key roles in any uh, uh, any innovation process the role of an idea generator obviously he or she is the person who comes up with a novel idea whether it is once again i'll repeat whether it is for a new product new service an existing method of doing something maybe just thinking about beyond where we are or thinking about a new solution to an existing problem uh, so uh, there's a person who comes up with a new idea however it is said that idea generators are often at the lower end of the organization because ideas are generated where uh, in terms of uh, you know conceptually speaking the rubber meets the road they are the people who are working at the crossroads of their functionality they are also interacting with customers the market so they have some idea about the friction that is caused by you know some products which can need to be improved so because they are at the lower end often they cannot push their ideas forward and for which they need the support of the second role which is called the sponsor and the third role is that of orchestrator sponsors are the people who lend the prestige the professional protection to the idea while the idea is still in its nascent stage the idea may die a premature death if too many enemies discover about the idea they can pull it out they can throw it they can crush it they can squeeze it now till the idea reaches a stage where it can justify itself the idea needs some protection and often at the middle or senior level of people senior level of management are people who can spot the idea and lend either the protection or pick up that idea for further growth there's an interesting story about an immigrant in the us who had been there for 17 years once this he was a worker in a family once he was working on the shop floor and the new factory manager was taking a round 
So he happened to go to this immigrant and he asked him, so what are you doing and so on, he started chatting. And the immigrant shared with him some idea about how what he was doing could be done in a better way. The new factory manager was very impressed and he said, oh, that's a terrific idea. When did you get it? And the immigrant said, sir, 17 years ago. This is a story about ideas taking root, but ideas not getting spotted, so ideas don't get utilized. So the role of sponsors is also to pick up bright ideas, give them, you know, give them a lease of life, give them, you know, a chance to prove themselves. And orchestrators are often at the top of the organization. They are the ones who are familiar with the uh, politics of the organization. They are familiar with the, they also own lots of resources and they know which are the coalitions which can really make this idea work. Who are the people who could work against it? So from whom this idea can be protected? In sustaining innovation, some of the key issues then are how do we attract? How do we develop and spot? How do we reward and motivate innovative individuals who are our idea generators? And if we are saying that the role of sponsor is equally important in spotting these bright people, can there be also rewards for sponsors in the organization? These are some of the questions which future designers of uh, reward systems for innovative organizations have to think about. How does, now we come to innovation fostering culture. You know, this culture by definition has to be a little different from the culture of normal organization. Now some are, the elements are, this is a culture of change. It is not tradition bound. You know, by definition, are people comfortable in asking the question, so what is new? What are the new things that you are doing? So in the air, you know, there's general sense of acceptance of novelty. Fresh ideas are welcome. And in fact, doing, working on the routine kind of a thing is somewhat looked down upon. You know, people value those people who are in the forefront of, not necessarily technology, but in the forefront of thinking afresh. You know, they are the people who are, who are providing support, encouragement to new ideas. Uh, Power and authority is a hierarchy. In fact, this is a point wealth remembering, especially in the Indian context where we place so much value on hierarchy. Hierarchy is often seen as the enemy of innovation. There's an interesting example of the president of Toyota many years ago when he had thought that the Toyota model at that time had lost its relevance for the young people. So what he did was to collect his people, youngest people, and he put them together. They, their average age was 27 years. And he put them together to design Toyota the way he, those young people would like to have. You know, the car with the kind of features that those young people would like to have. And he had promised them that there would be no interference from their seniors because hierarchy is the enemy of innovation. So they were, you know, given a free hand to design a car of their dreams. And what came out of their uh, joint effort together was, uh, was uh, sorry, not Toyota, it was Honda. It was Honda City. And that, you know, at the time when it was introduced, it in fact became a raging success. So that was an example which shows that uh, hierarchy in fact can be reduced if not totally eliminated. Uh, walls and doors in the organization, you know, how many, uh, uh, how many walls exist across different, uh, different departments? Can ideas f flow freely from one section to the other, from one room to the other? Or are there walls which are impermeable? This is my idea. I don't want my neighbor even to overhear that. How many f floors are there? How many levels in the organization for an idea to move upward to get recognized? And the, m the more we can minimize the walls and the flows in the organization, greater would be the probability of uh, innovations taking place. Uh, failures and mistakes, how do we treat failures, how do we treat mistakes, I have shared one example with you. Uh, sharing the credit and risk taking, is risk taking encouraged? You know it is all right if we fail, but actually it is, uh, it is acting which is valued and acting and failing is fine and the organization actually does not look down upon people who just think and think and don't act. If that is the culture, then that is a culture which is more conducive to uh, innovations. Uh, just want to share with you quickly examples of two organizations which are very well known for being uh, pioneers in the forefront of managing innovation, 3M and a more current uh, example, Google. So I would just like to share with you some examples and then I would close. Uh, I'm sure you know many of these things that 3M is looked, up, looked upon as uh, an innovation, uh, as a constant innovation machine, an organization which is more than 100 years old, but look at more than 60,000 new products, patents to their credit, and the kind of innovation they keep on coming with. You know, we have all heard this story about the post-it 
notes, but that was just the beginning, how they encourage innovations and how they follow the right kind of procedures, systems and how they have combined the operating part along with the innovative part to ensure that they become a sustaining innovation producing machine. Not just uh, an organization which has produced many new innovative ideas 50 years ago and now it has run out of the ideas. It's not like that. Uh, a list of some of the uh, uh, innovations is put on the screen. I would especially like to draw your attention to the latest posted picture paper. I was excited when I came to read about it. I'm sure you know some of you know about it. Uh, you know, we all take uh, digital pictures. We all like to look at the nicer pictures. We take printout, and often it is found that the printout is kept in the drawer. We put it, you know, if we take pains, we, we get it framed, but too much trouble for busy people uh, during this time. Uh, through this new technology posted picture paper, you can just, you know, take take a picture and take it take its uh, uh, take its printout and they have combined the adhesive kind of technology from post it to this so that this picture you can just slap on the fridge so there's a picture which is the printout and you can just put it on the fridge and you know it is there for everyone to see so you know so many intervening stages of taking pains to either get it printed or just putting it somewhere where you don't get to see those get eliminated uh, now how does uh, 3m do it it relies on a few simple rules and the rules are just put there the essence of these rules is that they look at encouraging innovation as their religion and whatever needs to be done about the culture to change that culture they are willing to do that they are willing to walk that extra mile uh, actively maintain the corporate culture of hire good people and let them do their job own way tolerate mistakes I mean that is the corporate mantra that call, tolerates mistakes you cannot say no to new ideas and people who are having new ideas they are encouraged to go and seek you know uh, seed money Seed money is called seed money because there is a seed of an idea and you need money to support that, to develop that. You go and you can get some funds from the head of the department. If the head is not uh, convinced about the power of the idea, you can go to any other department and you can seek funding. So new ideas are supported in a major way. Keep division small. Uh, division managers must know each other staffer's name, first name basis. You know, those are some of the ground rules to indicate that indeed. Uh, the group size is small enough for people to be interactive, to know each other, to know each other's contribution and to develop ideas together. 15% uh, rule, uh, you might have heard this is used in uh, 3M, this is also used in Google that 15% of your personal time is supposed to be a free time which you can devote to developing ideas for which you have passion. So nobody will ask you how you are developing this idea. You know, you can go and spend this time with people who are excited about your idea. Maybe they can use their 15% and maybe who knows, a new idea takes root there. Encourage risk taking by encouraging plenty of experimental doodling. Experimental doodling is nothing may come out of it. But at least, you know, you have an idea which you want to see the limits of. You want to develop it in an offbeat way. And that is encouraged, that is not dreaded, that is not, uh, mm -mm, that is not avoided. In fact, it is welcomed. How do we motivate the idea generators? Uh, 3M has its own way and in fact many organizations are trying to follow similar methods uh, that you know you pick up these people you give them a, a, a great deal of recognition 3Mers way you know they are uh, they are recognized they are they are seen as heroes in the organization and they are also made resources that they need for developing the idea further they are besides recognitions you know as the last point says you know some of the people who are their top you know uh, top uh, idea generators, they are given special vacations, they go with their family and you know spend 3-4 days and it's a, it's a call of honor also. Uh, top 20 overachievers and their spouses get a 4 day holiday at 3M's corporate retreat and you know this gets acknowledged, their norms, names get included in the role of honor of 3M. That is the way to encourage your new idea thinkers. Uh, expand the pie, they encourage people internally to keep on uh, interacting with customers and they say you know it is not internally our responsibility to encourage the new ideas the more we interact with customers customers are our partners we build upon their ideas their problems and together we would work out uh, new ways of looking at old problems uh, share the wealth you know in fact it's a very important part of the culture of 3m that new ideas or wisdom or new knowledge does not belong to the person who has created it it, be it becomes the property of the organization and don't kill a project, in fact they looked upon with disdain for people who say no to new ideas. So that is the way to develop new culture. Uh, then we come to an organization you are also familiar with, you are also excited with, it is Google. You all know a great deal about, so I will just show you this slide and then we will move on. Uh, Google products, aren't they exciting? You know, new things that Google is coming up with, 
the other day there was a mention of this uh, Google's uh, driverless car. You might have read that about. Hmm. Can you think of, can you believe that a car which doesn't have a driver and it would find their way, it would, and in fact, they, I'm told that in some parts of uh, California, they are, they've started experimenting with it. So some of the ways in which Google does this, flat organization chart, focus on the user, you know, their mantra is focus on the user, whatever the user wants, not customer, ultimate and user. And in order for them to achieve this, they select the brightest minds, they call them smart creatives. Those are the people who are extremely smart in what they are doing. Also, they are very, very creative thinkers. And then they are given a lot of recognition, a great deal of free reign. Uh, encourage people to think big. You know, that is one of the values. And it cannot, I don't think it can get bigger than this, the idea that one of the Googlers is right now working on, it is interplanetary internet. You know, can you... Can you beat it in terms of the sweep of their imagination? And that is the kind of challenging ideas they just say that we don't mind, you know, some of our bright, smart creatives to develop those ideas and we'll say where this uh, exploration takes us. Uh, all right. The Google way of thinking is not a fish just thinking about, if, if it's thinking about improvement in its aquarium, to add, you know, some more features to that. A Google way of thinking, this I have taken from, you know, a book which talks about the, uh, the way Google builds its special culture. The Google way of thinking is, uh, the fish thinks about, you know, going back to the sea where it is free to explore uh, the new horizons, where it is free, once again, to deal with also dangers of, uh, of that kind of exploration, but it does not have any constraints. Uh, likewise, the Google way of thinking, once again, from that book which advocates, which is used to promote among Googlers, the Google way of thinking is, you know, this is the way Google wants people when they are designing a car, not to think about the first kind in which there are just some additional, you know, more modern features added, but to break, break that kind of a thinking and go beyond that. Uh, why can't a car fly? And this is the Google way of thinking. Uh, elements of Google culture, work, eat and live together. You might have heard about this. You know, the famous Google, uh, they call it Google, uh, it's like multiplex Google X. You know, the places where Google offices are, they are huge campuses. They, there's very, very delicious cuisine available on the house for everyone who's working there. It is free, it is on the house, and people are encouraged to work together, eat together, live together, and just have fun together. Uh, keep them crowded. That is part of the Google philosophy, that the more people are together, the more, I mean, crowded also. They are, in fact, uh, listening to each other's ideas, listening loudly to how their thinking is developing, and that is the way they would like to promote it. Uh, don't listen to the hippos. Hippos, not the way we look at hippos. Hippos, as it is looked upon in the Google culture, is high, highest paid person's opinions. Hippo, as in highest, you know, so when there's a group of people who are meeting, don't pay attention to the person who is the highest paid person. We don't have to, you know, pay a great deal of attention to the senior most people, to the people who are the most paid. Look at the power of ideas, look at the data which is speaking. That is part of the Google culture. Then the Bezos, uh, you might have heard of uh, Jeff Bezos and Amazon.com. Amazon.com, we all know. The founder of Amazon.com, Jeff Bezos, had propounded this rule. I'm sure it would appeal to the youngsters sitting here. It is called the two pizza rule. Two pizza rule is the size of the team should not be greater than what can be fed on two pizzas. Okay, which means that we want to promote a small team which can interact together, they can fight together, they can, you know, develop on each other's idea, but they are together, they bet for each other, they internally they might be you know bickering but when they come together contributing to each other they are a team which works as a family then overworked in a positive way establish a culture of yes don't be evil mantra check the moral compass and the last one is have fun as with small f not fun with a capital f which means organized fun parties picnics which are a very formal way of having fun according to google people while they are working together should be having a great time Great time means, you know, we are laughing together, we are enjoying, we are smiling, we are, uh, we are building upon each other's jokes, we are having bets while we are working. And that way, that, that develops a solidarity and a sense of fun, which cannot be replicated easily. Uh, drawing from all these lessons from, uh, from these two organizations, those I've just put here, uh, herd your black sheep. We do not know who our next idea generator may be. So can the organization continue to pay equal attention to new ideas, no matter from whom they come? Uh, can we 
can we look for intensity? Can we avoid working for perfection? Because perfection can never be achieved. We don't wait for the idea to be perfected. Let it be thrown out to the wolves. You know, let it be perfected with contribution from other people. So when I think of a new idea, when I present it to outside people, it does not have to be in its final form. Uh, then interaction is equal to innovation. That was Steve Jobs. Can we encourage a great deal of interaction? The more the interaction, the greater is the possibility of uh, kaleidoscopic thinking. New ideas, new combinations, new frontiers to conquer. Uh, make hierarchy less relevant and combine passion with patience. Uh, you cannot have innovation unless there is passion to do something, to, to do something fresh, to do something different and there is an idea about which a person has really got enamored and would like to work on that day in day out. So that passion is extremely important. And along with passion, there has to be patience. Uh, you remember I started this by showing you a field in which there were small flowers coming out of the plants which had just sprouted. Now if you are a gardener, you have to have patience to let that seed that you have thrown sprout. You can't pull out that plant every week to see how it is developing. Likewise for innovation, every week we cannot ask this question about how are you developing. That shows you know, our lack of familiarity with the very process of innovation. So I want to conclude this session by once again reminding you about what I had said that to me all of you sitting here are have a very constructive role to play in your organizations wherever you join, your family business, some other organization as promoters of innovation and as promoters of innovation you can have, you can play the uh, idea generator role, you can play the sponsor role, you can protect other ideas, others ideas or you can be the orchestrator, you can get more resources, you can get the uh, you know limelight focused on these people who are working on new ideas. But innovation is not a solitary endeavor, it needs contribution from a whole lot of people. And when the right kind of ecosystem is created, in fact those plants which we had seen as being small, they can blossom into bigger trees with flowers and if the right kind of ecosystem continues, there may be some of those plants which have grown to these trees which may develop into further fruition and with ideas which have a lot of promise and I wanted you to show one of the trees from our campus. This is a mango tree which is right now full of blossom with that, I don't know what you call it in Marathi, but these are you know small little uh, flowers which will grow into uh, mango, you know full blown mangoes. The point I want to make is this kind of a journey cannot be undertaken by a person all by himself. The support of an entire ecosystem in managing the right kind of culture is called for. Thank you.